All right, it's finally happened. Um, after it's kind of one of the worst kept secrets in the league that the Detroit Red Wings have acquired Alex DeBrincat from the Ottawa Senators. Uh, the trade is Alex DeBrincat goes the other way, obviously. Uh, in return, the Sens do get Dominic Kubelik, the power play man himself, Donovan Sabrinko, defensive prospect, who is from Ottawa. Fun fact. Uh, a conditional first round pick in this year, uh, this upcoming draft. Yeah, it's gonna, that's a weird time of the year to get to say that, uh, as well as a fourth round pick. Uh, then along with that, they do sign Alex to bring get to a contract extension. And uh, in my head, I was just like, they need a, they need a number. Who's his comparable? A tiny goal scorer. Uh, get Cole Caulfield's number. But uh, I believe it's a four year deal. Um, yeah, before we get years. to the trade itself, what do you think of the contract? Oh, I think that's a great deal for Detroit. Didn't I think give that... up too much term, which Iserman apparently did not want to do. Imagine this next oh, yeah. Excuse oh, me. What's going on over Cap there? was playing it out. No. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, no, I like it. I like it for Detroit, I guess, you know, from DeBrincat's perspective too, I guess. Where was he going to get more from somewhere else? Maybe if he went longer. Um, but that the only place right now that sounds like was offering eight years was Ottawa. And that wasn't happening. He didn't want to be in Ottawa. So for four years at 7.875, and then for him to go to free agency or to be a UFA, let's say around 29, 30 years old, he'll get his money. He'll get his money again. Not that this is a particularly cheap contract. He's still making millions and mm-hmm. millions of dollars. But I think for both teams, um, there's there's good to it, uh, especially when you look at who Alex DeBrincat's going to play with next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I'm the Detroit Red Wings, I'm not particularly worried. So, he, yeah, he'll be 29 when this contract is done. So he'll get another big payday. I'm just surprised... It was four years. I don't know. I just thought if maybe with everyone signing shorter term deals, four years just seems. Uh, I mean, four years on a contract is pretty good for most teams, but it's just it felt like the way the climate is right now. I was surprised it was as many as four. It just felt like a weird number. I thought if he was going to go short term to sort of bridge the gap to a bigger contract, he would have gone. But I, I don't know. Hey, maybe you know if he, if he still gets that big contract at the end, it doesn't really matter. But I mean, yeah, for Detroit, uh, a guy who can score you forty goals, less than eight million dollars. I mean, uh, that's pretty hot. I'll take that. Him and Larkin are going to be great. And then I don't know exactly who they play on the top line. Maybe they just go Lucas uh, Raymond. Yeah, or I don't. I mean, you know. I'd play put Lucas Raymond there. I don't see why God, not. They have such a weird lineup. Like I'm Detroit. I just kind of look. I'm like, yeah, Larkin. Yeah. And then you like to bring Cat. All right, you know, good player. Just bring in. You forget David Perron exists there. Because it's like how busy they've been in the free agent market the past couple of years. It's like, oh, yeah, Jim, Dave, God, David. Jesus, not David. I'm looking at Perron as I'm trying to read JT Comfer. Yeah. Andrew Kopp, obviously, they brought in. It's like, oh, crap. Yeah, they have Clint Costin. Oh, yeah, they signed Daniel Sprung. I forgot they signed Christian Fisher. It really does feel like when you start an NHL mode rebuild, like in, in the video game, and you just kind of sign a bunch of dudes to fill out your roster. Um, and then it's like half their defenses are going to be new players with Hall, Goss, Bear, and Sherratt. I mean, so not Sherratt, he's obviously been there. Um, but it's just it's just really weird looking at this team. I'm, sure. I'm not saying this was a bad trade, obviously. They no. didn't give like give anything up, but it's just uh, it's just They've got a weird roster right now, man. I, I mean, got a I, weird I, roster. Their defense, I, I have no idea how to uh, explain. But up front, you look at up front, and I would argue that what they're missing is more top end talent, and I think they can get it. Yeah. And they don't necessarily need to do it through trade. Like I think Alex DeBrincat top talent no question about it but they have guys there lucas raymond i think in in particular who if he can go back to what he was doing in his rookie year i think he has had had a bit of a down year if he can go back to doing what he was doing in his rookie year especially on a line with debrinkat and dylan larkin is exactly what the red wings need 
I was starting to question the Iser plan last episode, mm -hmm. but this is a good return to it. This is a good return. You know, it's weird that, do you know, obviously you could assume, assume pretty fairly that the longest term deal right now is Dylan Larkin. Then obviously to bring to bring Cat and Copper four years, and then JT Confer's a five year deal. Mm -hmm. uh, no one else in Detroit is actually past five years, so at least they don't have any albatross contracts that are going to block any young guys that could be coming up. Now defense, yeah, it's it's a little no one's longer than three years there. I mean, we'll see what happens with more outside of next summer, but um, it's weird. A lot of trade protection on the defense too. Wallman, Hall, Gosses, Bear, and Benchrod. You were right. Everyone got trade protection. How in yeah, the man. world did Shane Gosses Bear get trade protection? The who who allowed that? Who was the who, did the agents all come together and say, "Listen, guys, trade protection." No one's coming to Canada next year's trade deadline. Eh? No, I just don't no get. I, I don't get how they. I, I don't get how so many players got trade protection. I feel like it's a bit overused, but whatever. That's not my fault. Yeah, my problem, I, mean, I guess. <laughs> We'll see how many actually exercise that. I know. Well, that's the thing too. Is like half the time I feel like they don't exercise it, and then when they do exercise it, a la Tory crew, it's like everyone's up in arms. So I, I, mm -hmm. I don't get it. Whatever. But so, so let's talk about the other side of this, and that is the return that Ottawa got. Mm -hmm. uh, I think. Underwhelming is a pretty fair word to use when you look at the name that is Alex Brincat. However, given the situation they were in, I'm not surprised that that's all they got. It is still pretty bad, though, in my it, opinion. It's also underwhelming considering what they gave up. I, yeah, I think that's a um, big, big part of it. Like you give up a first, uh, you, sorry, a seventh overall pick in Kevin Korchinski and a second round mm -hmm. pick, which was 39th overall in Paul Ledwinski. Like, and, mm -hmm. and a third for 2024. So it, it's a lot, mm -hmm. it's a lot to give up and then to go and turn around and then get Dominic Kubalik, who is going to be useful, but not Alex to bring cat Don Donovan Sabrango, who is a prospect. So a future absolutely is a, is a good thing. Um, a fourth round pick and then a conditional first, which is really going to be like, it, if I'm understanding the conditions, the condition? right, it, it could either be Boston's or it could be Ottawa's. So we're now talking, it's probably going to be, it's not going to be a top 10 pick. Because they're all it's a protected, mm -hmm. so uh, uh, that it's it is a bit disappointing the return. But I you have do hit have to my look, mic like four times. I'm so, oh, so sorry. I, I do. I think I heard it once. But okay. I think like you know, you look at the other RFA trade, similar situation. It's almost comparable to. The Pierre Pierre Luc Dubois trade, but I would argue the Pierre Luc Dubois trade you had more um, pieces to win quote win now, or that are going to play now. I think there's a lot more futures here, um, and I don't know if that necessarily benefits the Ottawa Senators for a team who wants to make the playoffs and play competitive games into April. Um, I also want to make a point here in saying that if you look at it, this may be kind of unfair to say, mm -hmm. but you essentially gave up the seventh overall pick, as you mentioned, and that other selection. In a vacuum, we can kind of say you gave it up, and at the end of it, you basically have what's probably going to be mid-round pick, a fourth a prospect who I don't think is going to – he could he make it, sure, but is he going to be a difference maker? No, especially they have – of their big name D they have currently, I mean, he's going to be the – bottom half of those pairs and Kubelik. Right. It's um like Dominic Kubelik on what could probably be a PP two third liner on a contender. On Ottawa, he could probably get a bigger role right now, I would assume. Especially if they don't sign Tarasenko and no one dare tell me that if they sign Tarasenko, this helps the deal. Shut up. Don't do that. No. But I think I'm it not does, letting though. that happen. Uh, but I think it no does, does though. It. Yeah, it absolutely does. But he's like 31 now. He's not. I think you're is, underestimating he's, he's, Vladimir Tarasenko. Like we had the conversation. Uh, maybe. 
I, I think well, you. He's not as young as 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 Debrinkat. His scoring acumen. He hasn't scored the level that Debrinkat has for years. You know, well, I just Debrinkat don't... had a bad year last year, though. He had tw- how yeah, many... but then look at before that. Tarasenko has had one good year in what his past three or four. And and you know Fine, I love Vladimir but, Tarasenko. Okay, yeah, but okay, okay, fair. He's had he's. I don't know. I think I disagree. Last year he had 18 goals and let's call it 60, uh, almost 70 games. The year before mm-hmm. that he had 34 and 75. Then you go the two COVID shortened years. I think he was injured like massively. Yeah, he played 20, 24 was, and 10 games. Head. And then for four straight years or five straight years, he had 30 plus goals. Like, yeah, but, but with Alex DeBrink, it's like. Though? I know how old he is, but with but you weren't keeping Alex Debrinka. I'm not saying it changed completely changes the deal, but there has to be some good thing to come out of this because right now all you've gotten in is futures and Dominic mm-hmm. Kubalik, and that's most definitely not good enough. Yeah, they For don't t- need futures anymore. No. They need to. The Sens need to be winning now. Well, the I, I don't was over think- last year. Exactly. I don't think like right now. Assuming Patrice Bergeron's coming back, I don't. I have a problem putting them over Boston. I have a problem putting them over the Sabers right now. Um. So it's it's difficult for me to sense making it to see. It's difficult for me to see the sense making the playoffs this year. And um, I just don't. That's just I don't know how much of a step forward they're they're gonna take. Listen, I want to just make this very clear. I love that Pierre Dorian did the Debrinkat trade to begin with. We need more yeah. zest like that in this league. Uh, it's just, it is unfortunately a gamble that has not worked out. But I mean, hey, take the gambles, man. I don't blame it. It's just, um, I just, I have a very difficult time. Maybe we, when we get closer to the beginning of the season, we do the preview for it. We'll we'll have a bigger discussion on the Suns. It's just, right now, I just, I have a lot of questions as to how they they make noise this year. 